Ostensibly. Ostensibly. <laughs> Whether you'll actually whether you'll actually make it to the start of the PPC uh, marathon uh, or half marathon, that's you know. Well, we'll know next time we we have the show. <laughs> so he's gone with a bunch of our friends. Uh, so we hope they have a safe trip and um, you know, uh, let off some steam. <laughs> I, they need I, to. I, I think they need to. You know, after what we saw today. Um, so yeah, um, this is. Uh, a nice PT cask strength whiskey. Okay. And what are you having in the boring corner? So I'm Which gonna is have be the interesting corner where I sit. Uh, yeah, well, I'm gonna have an Earl Grey classic because I really need to calm my nerves down, and tea has that effect on me. And I think that uh, you know, I, you know, just looking at the monetary statement, I was actually hoping for the best. I mean, I I knew that they had very little wiggle room. Very little wiggle room, and I was hoping that they would be very honest and uh, and come up very clearly on what needs to happen. Mm-hmm. I was hoping for the best, you know. Despite my misgivings, I was also hoping to be wrong. Yeah. You know? uh, but yeah, it's a it's a sad day. But we'll get into the weeds. Uh, I think it's uh, it's very interesting what they've come up with, and we'll get into the details. But uh, there's you know other interesting stories this last week. Anything interesting that you've gone through? No, nothing. N- nothing worth a mention uh, at this stage. Um, I think this is the story, you know, that everybody's been speculating and whispering yeah. about. You know, what is going to happen? What is the structured currency? You know, are we going to be better off? Um, so, you know, um, do, do you think that there was a performance anxiety to some extent? Because I think that you know, if you really think about it. Uh, this, there was just a heightened expectation in the market, and people were hoping for something uh, miraculous to happen. Look, oh, or, were we, or were we wishing for the best? Look, look I, I think you know, as a preamble, um, it was looking good, right? We had firstly, you, you had the announcement of Mushai Onwe as the new governor, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, a banker with impeccable credentials. Um, that built um, FBC holdings, uh, uh, you know, from a small entrepreneurial institution to one of um, the, you know, one of the bigger, better run indigenous uh, banks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so that was a definite huge positive cause for optimism. And then, you know, there was all this consternation and concern around there not being a monetary policy statement announcement. And, you know, the president stepped in and he actually uh, moved forward the appointment from the beginning of May to the beginning of April. Another positive, right? So, we, you know, so so the, the backdrop of this announcement is all positive. You have an individual that has the respect of the market and um, their appointment is brought forward. Um, and there's every expectation that we are going to move in a new and better direction, you know. And I think, but with those expectations grounded in reality, because that's the other thing. I mean, it's like as if people don't understand where Zimbabwe is and the problems that Zimbabwe has. I mean, these are extraordinary times that we live in, and Zimbabwe has just gone through a, a treacherous drought, uh, and it's going through. Yeah, going through. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean. How much of our expectation was actually edged in reality? Look, I don't know. Um, they say necessity is the mother of invention. You know, um, often when people um, are in trouble, uh, it inspires them to do better, to grow, to adapt, to course correct. Mm-hmm. And certainly, uh, based on what you said, not only do we have the challenge of um, a drought, we have low global commodity prices. Um, we've got significant economic problems at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's hard to imagine a better time for us to actually pivot and do things differently and move in a better direction. Mm-hmm. So, 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 so that also informs some of my cautious optimism. You know, the, the, the fact that as a country we desperately need to do things differently if we're going to um, navigate our but way out you of still these not ans- you, You're still not answering the question. How much of that optimism 
was aged in reality. So, okay, so let me give you a, a football analogy. It's like believing that Man- Man- Manchester United <laughs> will win the league. You're going to upset a lot of people with such statements. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, we all want Manchester United to do well, and we all want Manchester United to end up in the top four, but to actually win the league and to have an argument where you can be on Twitter or on X and argue that Man United can actually win the league. How much of that is based on reality and how much of it is was just purely wishful thinking? Just our desirous wishes as a country. We want the country to do well, but we need dos, well, heavy doses of uh, reality check. Look, I, I mean, I mean you, you, make a, you make a valid point. I think there is a lot of data to support a more pessimistic perspective, for sure. Um, and, you know, perhaps my cautious optimism wasn't uh, properly grounded. Um, but I, I, I'm an optimist by nature. You know, that's just, you know, the lens through which I look at the world. And um, I'm always going to find um, the silver lining in, in, in the dark clouds. You okay. know, unlike you, I think your default setting is uh, to be a bit more pessimistic, to be a bit more skeptical. Absolutely not. I mean, I I, I always let you uh, win that argument that I'm actually pessimistic. But no, 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 no. I'm actually not. I'm, I'm very, from a professional perspective, I'm very pragmatic. Mm-hmm. I deal with hard evidence data, and I will swing with the with the data. Mm-hmm. Whatever the data is telling me, that's exactly how I swing. But uh, generally, my disposition, internal disposition. Uh, is to be extremely optimistic about my own circumstances <laughs> and extremely <laughs> pessimistic about the world's circumstances. So I think that the world is crushing, but I think that there are lots of opportunities for individuals. That's just the way I view the world. But from an economic, from a professional perspective, it's just the data. Whatever the data is telling me, that's exactly how I will swing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, look, I, I think there was data that supported a more optimistic view uh, around this uh, monetary policy. So, for example, um, we haven't had an auction uh, this year. And the auction, you know... Um, well, it's... I, I, and what were the reasons? I've been, a, I've been a harsh critic of the auction, you know. So, mm-hmm. we used to allocate currency that we didn't have. Um, there was a lot, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a significant backlog. And, you know... But, but uh, Tafaro, what were the reasons why we... Why the I, I think it's just there. progress. I, I think that there was just a change in the mindset uh, and a recognition that the auction was no, failing. No, I think there was a, a 36, 37 week backlog. Mm-hmm. And if you think about it, every week we were donating about 40 million US dollars worth of... Uh, well, it came down to about half of that. So about 20 million. But if yeah. you think about it, that's 37 weeks mm-hmm. of 20 million that we were donating. And those donations... As often happens with donations, the money ran out. Mm -hmm. So the money was simply not there. That's why the auction hasn't been there. But we'll get into the weeds of that. Uh, But the other reality is you're you're a market participant. I mean, you're a trader. You understand markets. And if if we were in a different country, not Zimbabwe, Mm -hmm. and someone told you that uh, for the last three months, the exchange rate has lost uh, 72%. Mm-hmm. What what would you say? You know, how would you how would you look at it? Well, the, so the, a currency has lost seventy two percent of its value. Would you say that uh, there's reason to be optimistic about the rest of the year? No, that 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 would certainly be a bad sign. You know, that would certainly be, certainly be cause for significant concern, uh, and for one to actually expect cost correction because. You know that that kind of devaluation um, speaks to failure, right? And I don't think there's any uh, country that wants to fail on an ongoing basis. <laughs> so again, I ask you the question because you were one of the more optimistic uh, individuals. So why would you be optimistic? Why why then would you be w- would you think that uh, there's reason to be optimistic? Yeah, it's kind of like um, a patient, you know, and this is the, the, the analogy that I use, you know, it's a medical analogy to say, um, as long as you can function, you can get out of bed in the morning and ha- have your coffee and go through your day and pretty much do whatever you like, 
um, you can get a pretty serious uh, diagnosis and ignore it, right? You can just say, ah, look, mm-hmm. I actually don't like this doctor or this doctor doesn't know what he's talking about. My nganga tells me that everything is fine. Um, and you can carry on with your life on that basis, yeah? Uh, but what happens then as you continue to deteriorate is you get to a place where you can't get out of bed, where you're suffering from chronic pain, when you can't do the things that you enjoy doing, right? And now you have a conundrum. Do you continue to berate the doctor? Uh, notwithstanding or engage <coughs> palliative care or so? Or, or, or do, you actually, do you actually have an epiphany, you know, where you recognize that you're in trouble, that you need to do things differently, otherwise you're going to be miserable? Mm. You know, so that's the analogy that I like to use. You know, and 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 that's always been um, from a Zimbabwean economic policy perspective, the source of my optimism. That if the evidence is clear that things are not working. Okay, let's continue with the medical analogy. Yeah. If this was cancer, at what level do you think, or what stage do you think our cancer is? Because then we can verify whether you 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 are asking for a miracle or you are asking for no, so, so, the so, obvious. So I mean, the beauty, the, I, I would say we're in stage four. Cancer. So the beauty of nations, right, uh-huh. is that um, short of something dramatic uh, happening, like being assimilated by another country, nations are, are, are immortal beings, right? Uh-huh. Um, so even the worst run places in the world, you know, um, like North Korea or Venezuela, it's possible to imagine in 10, 20, 30 years, um, new leadership doing things differently. I, th- I think you're right. So going on with our medical uh, analogy, I would say that uh, this is stage four cancer. The good news is we're not going to die because okay. we're a sovereign nation, yeah. right? Uh, but the bad news is it's stage four cancer. Also, there's going to be significant pain and suffering, for sure. Exactly. And that's... And that's, that's, that's but, but if we were to diagnose the problem and call it uh, stage four cancer, then the reality is... Uh, what we are asking for is not a miracle, right? We need medical attention. We need to do certain things right. And if we are not doing those things, then it's just going to be very, very difficult for us. Absolutely. Um, so if we don't take um, appropriate action, chemotherapy, uh, 2024 is going to be an incredibly tough year. Yeah. So, you know, my view, so let me give you my view, you know, my preamble going into this is... You know, I was very clear that the patient is on stage four cancer. It's pretty bad. And what we require is chemotherapy. But I thought that, you know, uh, the, the doctor, and in this particular case, that's John the second, was not the most equipped individual. While he was a good doctor also, I didn't think that he was a, a cancer doctor. I didn't think that he was the right guy with the right tools to carry out. But I still thought, you know what, because he's a doctor, he knows at least something about the cancer and what to do, mm-hmm. right? Or he would know who to call. Mm-hmm. That actually, you know what, my limitation as a doctor is as far as this is concerned, I need more specialist help and I know where to get them. Mm-hmm. Reading through the statement and the new policy, my view is it's a guy who actually doesn't think we're on stage four cancer, who thinks we're somewhere around stage one, and who's actually saying that we don't need chemotherapy when it's clear that what we need is chemotherapy. So it's like we're having to go back and going through the same process that we went through with Panonetsa, right? When Panonetsa came... He looked at the problem and he didn't think we had a problem. But he went through all the stages, right, until he accepted that this is our problem. And it took him 10 years to get to that stage. And what's happening now is we get John II and he's taking us back to 2016. Well, we have to sort of understand the problem again. But the patient is stage 4 cancer. And now we have to go through all those tests again, all the things that we've gone through. And to me, that's the disappointment, that uh, I thought that he would be braver, he would be a lot more courageous, but it looks like he's taking us back into time. Yeah, look, I, I wouldn't paint uh, 
a picture that bleak. Um, but I, what I will say is that um, the source of my disappointment might be different from yours. Is uh, for me, we don't seem to have had an honest conversation about where we are today and how we got here. Because if we're going to make meaningful progress going forward, we need to actually be alive to where we are and how we got got you know how we got here, right? So if we, if we don't address that, then we don't have a snowball's chance. Um, of actually moving forward and making progress, and so 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 so, so we we don't seem to be having an honest conversation. We don't seem to be um, addressing our reality objectively, you know. Um, and maybe for our audience, because we could have a new audience. Uh, I think everybody was looking forward to this. Maybe you can just take take us back a bit and then just explain the problem. What is our problem? What's our cancer? So, so um, I think from a government of Zimbabwe point of view, the aspiration is to have a successful local currency, like pretty much every sovereign nation in the world, right? Uh, if you look at our economy today, 80% plus of the transactions happen in US dollars, a currency that is not ours, that we do not control, uh, Less than 20% of our economic activity is actually in our local currency. Mm -hmm. And so the aspiration is to reverse that, right? Is to reverse the trend in the loss of market share of the local currency and to have a vibrant, successful local currency um, that works for 80% plus of local transactions. So we need to understand why does our local currency have such a small market share, right? And the reason why that is the case is because we've had economic policy that has eroded faith and confidence in the local currency to the extent that most people in the economy prefer to transact in U.S. dollars, right? We've, we had a bout of hyperinflation that ended in 2009. Uh, we dollarized, and then we, um, through uh, policy... Um, that through policy failure, we 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 found ourselves back with a local currency uh, in 2016, 2017, and that local currency enjoyed significant market share. Um, it was 70, 80 percent uh, of economic transactions, and steadily over time, because we mismanaged. So this was uh, February 2019. That's when we introduced uh, the local currency. Yeah, but there was a power market emerged from about you know twenty six end of twenty sixteen going into twenty seventeen. You know, it, so yeah, the official a, government position. RTGS. Yeah, the, the official government position was one to one, but the reality was, you know, those bank balances were no longer one U.S. One. dollars. Yeah. Um, everybody understood that it's you know it was a bastardized U.S. dollar, um, and eventually um, in twenty nineteen this actually became official. Right, and because of um, printing, you know, reckless money supply growth, you know, um, that currency uh, between 2019 and where we sit today has lost more than 99.9 percent of its value. Mm -hmm. um, and you were just speaking to the last three months where we've seen 70 percent plus of the value um, being destroyed by hyperinflation. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so the challenge that we have with the local currency is a lack of faith and confidence, and this lack of faith and confidence is not. Um, because Zimbabweans are unjustifiably gloomy and unpatriotic when it comes to their local currencies because we have 20 years of data telling us that our institutions consistently fail to manage the local currency, right? And what we were... So in other words, our cancer, uh, it's not, you know, fate. It's rather... It's, it's self-inflicted. Self-inflicted right. cancer. So, so, yeah. so, so, you know, and the great hope from this monetary policy statement, um, with a, with a new governor, right, was that we would start to seriously address this issue, right, to say, to acknowledge that, you know what, for the last 20 years. Well, but he does say, you know, he's not going to print. He's not going to be involved in any quasi fiscal activities. He does say it in his statement. Yeah, but over the last 20 well, are years... You, are you saying you don't believe him? Over, Suddenly you don't believe him. Over the last 20 years, every senior government official has said that 
they believe in tight monetary policy that they don't think printing is a good idea. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think we're at a place in our country where, um, you know, and again, it's not about us being unduly cynical, right? We, we are, the government does not have the credibility to be taken at its word. That's just, that's true. That's just the reality. Mm. And so what you actually need to turn around is to be honest about this, um, state of affairs to, to acknowledge that our institutions don't have the credibility that we would hope for and that we understand and acknowledge this and we are going to brick by brick rebuild the reputation and credibility of these institutions. So, so, so you actually uh, needed to have a policy. Well, Rufaro, you know, John, and you know John personally, and, uh, you know, he's got an incredible history. He's a very smart man. Are you telling me he doesn't know this? I think he knows this. Um, so why couldn't, he, why, why couldn't he say it? Look, my best guess um, is that um, he's, a, he's a technocrat, he's not a political animal, and um, notwithstanding his professional advice, um, there's a narrative that comes from... Um, well, are you trying to tell us that there was uh, you know, someone deleting acres and acres of his speech? So no, that no, he couldn't no, no, speak directly so, so, into how do you instill confidence in our institutions? I mean, the so, one so, thing that he didn't so, even do was to touch the law. Because I quite agree with you that a lot of the problems that we have have to do with just how our institutions and our policy and our laws have been crafted. When you look at the Reserve Bank Act, there's serious problems there. And we thought that the new governor would come in and directly address that, but he didn't. So, so, this, so um, there's a famous politician that you might have heard of uh, by the name uh, Barack Obama. Oh, uh, he <laughs> and uh, uh, we tend of, to forget him. One of the interesting things that he's he 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 repeatedly said was that um, making the government change direction is like turning the Titanic. It's it's a huge ship. It doesn't turn quickly. Uh, it's not given. It's given to inertia. Um, it's only possible to make small changes uh, at a time. And I think um, the lesson, you know, and so Mushawan will join the long list of people from the private sector who went into government and uh, engendered a lot of uh, hope and enthusiasm from goodwill at the beginning from us in the business community you know so you you know whether it's Mtuli or Guamatanga or or Chitando right we we were really excited by their appointments we thought look this is fantastic Uh, we have private sector thinking in government Uh, but perhaps the reality is simply that the government is a really big ship and turning it is a Herculean task. <laughs> well, you know what the problem is? <laughs> the problem is we, we, we're turning the Titanic the wrong way. <laughs> you know, you thought that you know all these technocrats would actually do something or turn the Titanic mm-hmm. the right way, but they're turning it the wrong way, and that's uh, so. So so so, I think, so. so so I think that's just the nature of the beast, right? That um, to actually. Uh, um, but, so are you calling uh, them naive? Are you? Calling Professor Tuli, George Gormatanga, and now John Mushayaba naive. No, no, I, I don't think they're na- naive. I think that they are very brave and courageous to actually um, take on such tasks. And I think, um, you know, if you actually if you actually um, pay attention to their views and positions before they got into government, and then what they've since uh, been able to achieve, it's a mixed bag. For sure, you know. Um, so they, on some issues, they were able to make progress. On other issues, um, not so much. Um, so, 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 I think I'm still very much for uh, people in the private sector joining government and trying to put their thumb on the scale and help uh, steer the ship in a slightly different direction. But I, but, I, but I'm much less optimistic. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm much more. Um, pragmatic. 
pragmatic about it. I, I think that the, the honest truth of the matter is, uh, you know, you can have um, scores of highly regarded technocrats join government, um, but it's it's. The, I, I I think unless you actually have um, a political ideology uh, that's embraced uh, by the ruling party that is completely different in terms of its attitude towards free market capitalism, we're not actually going to see significant change. Mm. You know, just going back to our medical analogy, and this was, you know, stage four cancer, uh, what we tend to see happening, especially with our traditional families, is uh, if you cannot be treated in the hospitals, what they tend to do is they tend to go to ngangas and, uh, you know, spirit mediums and all sorts to, fi- to find solutions there. And I think that that's something that we seem to be doing in our monetary economics, eh? Uh, we've discarded the textbook. And bookish. The bookish. Bookish economics. Med- bookish mm. medicine. We've discarded it. And we've gone with, uh, you know, spirit men, ngangas, all sorts, eh? My poor story. Yeah, look, it's really sad. And you know, um, because if you actually, so if we get into the weeds a little bit, if you yeah, actually... that's what I want us to do. So... To do that, the first thing, because I think that's the biggest highlight, and that's what a lot of people want to understand, is this uh, new currency. So we now have a new currency. So they've done away with Zoom Dollar. They've kept the multi-currency system, and we have a new currency. And that new currency is ZIG. And effectively, if you think about it, they're saying that uh, it's, uh, it's indexed to the gold price, backed by gold, and the going exchange rate between the Zim dollar and um, the US dollar. So if you look at one one ounce of one ounce of gold is equivalent to twenty two twenty US dollars. If you use an exchange rate of twenty nine thousand, which is what they've done, you get the exchange rate of uh, thirteen. Okay. So they so now say so that the exchange rate is now one is to thirteen. So, so, so before we get into those details, I, I want to make the point that um, replacing what was the Zim dollar with Zig is actually worse than just carrying on with the Zim dollar, in my view, um, because the Zim dollar was actually most like a normal currency. Um, so Zig. Not only does it have... But they've come out clear. It's a structured currency. So they're not making any qualms about it. It's a yeah, and, 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 and It's actually, a derivative. And I actually think that's worse than having a normal currency. Okay. Uh, because, Please go ahead. Because first and foremost, you have baked in gold price volatility into um, your, your local currency. So every accountant in the country has now got to pay attention to the, what the price of gold is when they think about uh, their balances in relation to U.S. dollars and other currencies. I think, I think there are certain bans that they will, just to ensure that the volatility is not a... Yeah, but, 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 so but I think well, I, we do get your point. On you know, a month-on-month or on a quarterly you know, so, basis, it will move. So that's just a... A, um, a nightmare. An administrative headache. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and... you. Know, so, so I, I, I don't understand the upside of that. And then the I, movement I, I, and is then, actually and then de- dependent on uh, inflation differential between ourselves and the US dollar. Again, that that's another complexity. Com- uh, complexity is another administrative headache, and nobody believes that um, you know the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe should be taken at its word that this new currency is actually backed by gold. You know, and, and, and we've actually run this experiment because we had the physical gold coin and there was enthusiasm and subscription uh, for that. And then, you, you know, so this, uh, you know, this currency is called Zig, but the digital uh, gold coin was introduced and the market was not excited at, uh, about it because the market didn't believe that there was gold on the other side. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, the, you know, so, so we haven't bridged that credibility gap. Um, so to the extent that we've announced... So, so your argument is we've just introduced a lot more complexity when we should have just simplified it. Yeah, I mean, if right. you know, if, if, if I was the governor, I would have just removed four zeros. 
well, from effectively, the local... I, I would say that's what he has done. He says that Gono could do that. So Gono could reduce, could just cancel three zeros. What they have effectively done is they have They've taken off two, two zeros, zeros and a factor of two. And, much. and halved the 30. So if you say the exchange rate is a 30, what they've done is, if it's 30,000, what they've done is they've just removed the two zeros. So it's one is to 30. Then they've halved it. And it comes to approximately one is to yeah. eight. So, so, uh, so where's Gono? What Gono did would be direct, simplified, straightforward. He just removed the zeros, mm. and we just continued. What these guys have done is they've removed the zeros. They've done they exactly re- what they removed did, half the zeros they should have done, and they've added more complexity to it. Yeah, uh, without actually engendering any uh, credibility. Yeah. yeah. So, you see, and this is the other major failing in the statement, which. Um, with the benefit of hindsight, uh, should have t- tempered my optimism last week, is it, your target audience is the market, right? You want the market to buy in. You want Zimbabweans... Am I the seeker? You want Zimbabweans to uh, believe that we are making a positive change. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So you need to engage. You need to have that conversation where you ask the market what it wants to see, what would make it buy into new policy, right? So when you, ha- when you have a new policy announcement that's shrouded in secrecy, right, it's embargoed, um, you create this vibe, this sense in the market that, you know, you know what's better for the market mm-hmm. than the market. And so already you, you, you have, you're starting with very little credibility, very low credibility, and you're eroding that even further by... That, that, that tends to happen <laughs> with uh, every Nganga. You know, they tend to believe that they know every, better than you know, everybody in the village. So, 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 so you don't have this engagement. You don't actually consult um, you know, the players. Nganga, the... Nganga never consults. And then, and then, and then you, know, you, you make an announcement and lo and behold, the market um, it's not received well. Typical of Nanga, <laughs> right? So, 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 so that's another, uh, you know, cause for concern because you want to build, uh, you know, th- there is no major successful currency on this planet that is actually backed by gold or any commodity, right? All the world's successful currencies stand on faith and confidence, right? If you look at the US dollar, what is backing the US dollar, right? It's the faith and credit of the US government. If you look at the Swiss franc, if you look at the euro, Right, it, nobody can wake up tomorrow and say, "Listen, I've got a hundred euro. I want to claim so many ounces of, you know, so many grams of gold on the back of this." Right? It's it, it, it's it, people transacting those currencies because they are comfortable that they hold value, mm. um, and 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 that faith and confidence has been built and reinforced over decades. And the U.S. doesn't even have the trauma that we suffered, the hyperinflation trauma. So if you look at countries that have suffered the hyperinflation trauma, of particular interest is Germany. They still use cash. That trauma lives on 100 years later. And I think this is the reality. And I think Panunetsa was on the money because he at least understood that trauma. These guys come in, they've taken over the show, and they've discarded that trauma. And they've discarded that the market can actually dollarize on its own, that they can ignore the policy. So unlike Gono times, where you couldn't ignore the policy, Zimbabweans today can just ignore the policy and they can continue with their lives and continue being very dollarized. Yeah, I mean, there's a simple litmus test that if I was um, a policymaker, you know, I would apply to um, every decision Right, is this going to make Zimbabweans more likely to use US dollars or the local currency? Like, well, well getting into the weeds, and I, and I want us to get into the weeds. They're actually saying that uh, Zig will be competitive or go against the the Nostro dollar. And what they've done, and you know, allow me this, uh, which is actually quite dangerous. What they've done is we now have two currencies. So whereas previously we had a dual currency. So there was a clear demarcation between the Zim dollar and the US dollar. But what they have tried to do is to actually mix the two into some sort of uh, 
competition between the two. And I'll get into that when you look at the interest rates that they've actually put out there. And this is a typical classic economic treatise of how bad money chases away good money. Mm-hmm. That is what they've done. So good money here, we talk it, we, we, we're really essentially talking about Nostro. And what they've done is they've introduced this zig which is a derivative, as it's, a, it's an extremely complex structured currency that is dependent on gold price, as well as uh, reserves, as well as uh, uh, inflation differentials between ourselves and the U.S., whatever it is. But for the common man, just know that they've canceled two zeros and you know divided whatever the result is by two, and that's how you get to 13. But the reality is they've now said zig interest rates will come down from 130% to 20%, which is more or less what the nostril interest rate is. Right? So there, we now have ZIG in direct competition with US dollars. I, 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 I'll push back a little bit. I, I don't think it's in competition with US dollars. I don't think it's in competition with the nostril. I think it's another uh, mistake. In but you state. haven't heard the argument. The argument is if you're a borrower, mm-hmm. right, would you rather borrow in US dollars or in ZIG? If you were told today that ZIG interest rate is a 20% and US dollar Nostro is a 20%, more or less the same, yeah. what would you borrow in? No, you want to borrow in the soft currency, which is the ZIG. Bad money, right? Yeah. Exactly. So what's going to happen is the bad money is going to start contaminating the good money. No, no. So, look, I, I, I think that's presumptuous. I think, you see, so no, it's not presumptuous. So, so, it's so, exactly so, so, that's how the market is going to act. Let, let me push back and explain why I think that's presumptuous. So, um, for the sake of simplicity, uh, at a high level in our economy, there's uh, part of our economy that transacts in US dollar cash, right? Forget the banking system and US dollar nostrils. Just there's there's this part of our economy in which transactions happen in U.S. dollar cash, right? And then there's the rest of the economy where it's non-cash, non-U.S. dollar cash. So whether it's in Zim dollars, whether it's U.S. dollar Nostro, um, whatever you want, and now Zig, right? And I think the critical, the fundamental question that we should be applying our minds to is, with all these policy changes, is that U.S. dollar cash portion of our economy, is it as, you know, the percentage, is that share going to increase or is it going to decrease? Well, I can tell you what's going to happen. Remember what I said, good money, bad money chases away good money. So mm-hmm. what's going to happen is people will keep their U.S. dollars. So if you're a company or an individual, for example, is you will keep your U.S. dollars in an FCA. And, and I think that that's the only good thing that they've done, that you can, you're still allowed to keep your U.S. dollars. So you will keep your U.S. dollars in an FCA, but you're not going to borrow in US dollars, you're going to borrow in Zig. Yeah, but but uh, let, let me and, let me stop and you then ask you about borrowing in Zig. No, yeah, no but I want to ask you about borrowing in Zig. Yeah, because right? mm-hmm. as we speak today, about 10, 15 percent of our economy was a Zim dollar, which is now Zig. Right, tomorrow morning, effectively every Zim dollar balance is going to be a Zig balance. Mm-hmm. Okay, to the extent that you're actually able to borrow Zim dollars or Zig, what are you act- what are you going to do with it? What you can you can make uh, Zimmer payments. So government has now allowed you to make up to fifty percent. In fact, at least fifty percent. Mm-hmm. The statement says at least fifty percent you can pay in Zig. So if you look at your Zessa, mm-hmm. you know a whole lot of government departments where you can pay fifty percent, at least fifty percent. Mm-hmm. And the reality is, all your exporters they're going to get Zig. Mm-hmm. So twenty five percent surrender that's still uh, obtaining, and they're going to get Zig. And those zigs are what's going to create credit creation within the banks. So if you're a bank as well, what are you going to lend in? Are you going to lend in zig or are you going to lend in in Nostro? Yeah, so, so you so, find so, that more and more. I, I think you're, you're not understanding my my point. My point okay. is my point is if the trend over the last six, twelve, eighteen months is that the share of our economy that's US dollar cash denominated has been growing. At the expense of all these other, whether it's Zim dollars, Nostro, and that sort of thing, right? Okay. And I am saying, I don't see any evidence in this monetary policy statement that that trend is going to reverse. Okay. So, 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 it won't matter whether that you can borrow Zig. Or well, it does because okay. So, 
the, the difference is previously we were running a dual economy. So a dual currency. Mm-hmm. So we totally had a, a demarcation between US dollars and Zim dollar economy. They were totally yeah. two different, yeah. right? And that's still and, the case and, between the US dollar cash economy no, and the no. formal economy. We, we are now into what I would call how Zambia or Botswana run their economies. So Zambia, Botswana run their monetary systems is that they have FCA accounts. Mm-hmm. Now, you can go in Zambia and you can borrow in US dollars. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. So instead of Zambian kwacha, you can still borrow in, in US dollars. And banks are quite happy to lend you those FCAs, provided that you earn in US dollars. So if you're an exporter and you don't want any exposure whatsoever in Zimkwacha, you go to your bank in Zambia and they're able to do uh, a pure US dollar transaction based on your FCAs. Now, what's happening in Zimbabwe is exactly that. Now, in Zambia, if you gave anyone any choice, whether they will borrow in US dollars or borrow in Zimkwacha, they know the softer currency. They're just going to borrow in. Yes, no, no. I, I, I'm totally with currency. you. I'm totally with you, Tinashe. All the, the, and, and the, I'm saying that's point what's going to happen. Yes, here. yes. I, I agree with remember, you. Effectively, they've reduced the interest rates from one thirty because this I, is I, not I, Zim dollar anymore. I agree with you, Tinashe. But 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 I, I don't know whether you you know I'm, I'm talking past you when I say that that universe, right, that is interacting with banks and is contemplating that choice to borrow in Zim dollars in ZIG or in US dollars, that universe as a percentage of our economy is shrinking. It's dying. No, it's not. Referral. So, okay, yeah, so this is so, the debate so, that we should be having. Okay, why, so do you think, why do you think it's not shrinking? No, it's not because effectively, how much FCAs do we have? Because now we can't even call them nostros. We have to call them FCAs because these are real US dollars. Mm-hmm. And that's about a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. So this is a hard cash that's in the system. Mm-hmm. And that's now going to move into SCA's accounts, if mm-hmm. you think about it. Then you've got RTGS Nostro. Mm-hmm. That was about a billion. I think now we hear yeah, it's rumors, but it's about 1.5 billion. Mm-hmm. That was not backed by real US dollars. Mm-hmm. That was backed by an idea of US dollars. It wasn't US dollars. So you've got $1 billion, which is real US dollars. Then you've got another $1.5 billion, which is not real US dollars, but was on the idea of Nostro. And I'm saying anyone right now who has a bank borrowing, what they're thinking of is, okay, I will keep, I will hold my Nostros, but going forward, I'm just going to borrow in Zig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're going to be okay. able to borrow in Zig. Let's zoom out, Tinashe. Uh-huh. Right. We've got an informal sector that trades in US dollar cash. They're not banking that's the FCA. So I, I, consider I, that as FCA. I, I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to, I want to drive home this point about um, the formal sector. So, so I'm saying at a very high level, uh, there's a dichotomy in our economy. You have the informal sector that is trading in US dollar cash that is not banking, right? Mm-hmm. And you have the formal sector, right, that is banking. That will have zig balances. That will have FCA balances. And I am, I am putting it to you, Tinashe, mm. that going forward, the formal sector is going to shrink at the expense of the informal sector. So, it, so whether you can borrow in zig or not is going to matter less and less going forward. That's the point I'm trying to make. And I'm saying it's actually that is what's going to change our market because. And maybe, maybe again doing a very bad job at this, but let me, let me slow it down and let me try and explain it again. Yes, dumb it down. Yeah, let me dumb it down <laughs> again and explain this phenomenon. Banks are not going to lend to anyone who's not earning real US dollars. Okay. If you're not earning US dollars, they're not going to lend to you. Okay. Right. That's already pretty much the case today anyway. They're not really lending no. in Zim dollars when anyway. You look at, when you look at Nostro, when you look at civil servants, when you look at an entire, those were Nostro lendings. Mm-hmm. In fact, I would say, you know, our total, let's call it 1.5 billion mm-hmm. credit in the market, a billion of that. So two thirds was actually Nostro borrowings. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying that no bank is going to lend unless 
unless you're earning you, real US dollars, mm-hmm. then they will lend you real US I dollars. I concur, 100%. Right? Now, almost everyone else, your manufacturers, your distributors, your civil servants, everybody else, mm-hmm. immediately they can only borrow going forward mm-hmm. in ZIG. Why? Because they're not earning in real dollars anymore. No one is earning real dollars anymore. Why? I, I, because I'm you're not. earning ZIG. Uh, okay, yeah. Actually, so if you're a government, if you're a government sorry, civil servant, let, let, what let, are you earning? Let, 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 let's explore this. Okay. okay. I, I, I think you're touching on something quite interesting, right? So, um, last month in March, right, um, you have a cohort of employees um, that work for the government we call civil servants. Yes. Right? When um, they get a notification that they've been paid, they were able to go to an ATM or to a bank branch and withdraw green notes. Yes. Yeah. So do you think that because of today's monetary policy statement, um, these civil servants who were able to withdraw US dollar cash notes last month are going to be like, you know what? Now I'm getting the SIG and I'm getting these SIG notes and that's okay. That's a different argument. No, no, this is a question I'm saying. No, I, no, 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 they're not going to be okay with it. But that's the reality. Is that going to be their reality? That's going to be their reality. That because from, from, because they, they're going to move from withdrawing US dollar notes to withdrawing SIG notes. Unless they have an FCA account. Unless no. they've got real US dollars. Because if the government is now accepting 50%, where is the government going to get the US dollars? Tinashe, I, I, I think see, see, this, this, you need to engage with the question, right? Mm-hmm. Government employees, civil servants. Do they have a choice? That's a good question. Because, because just think about life in your universe, right? The companies that you are involved in, your personal household. Do you think because of this monetary policy statement, you can wake up tomorrow and pay someone you are paying US dollar? Cash, Zig. Well, legally now, and this is the yes, critical thing. Legally, yes. legally now. But do you think you can do it? Do you think you can pull it off? Well, with the informal sector, you won't be able to pull it off. But with the formal sector, you know, the, your a, retailers, they're going to have to toe the line. There's a group that I'm that I'm on where somebody posted the question. You know, uh, so will I be able to buy fuel with Zig? <laughs> <laughs> And everybody found it hilarious. You see, so, so, so. Uh, but, but remember, there was a the time reality. when you could. Yeah, yeah. So no, I'm, I'm making the. Okay, so I'm making the distinction. Yeah. That there's an FCA mm-hmm. that is fully backed by US dollars. Mm-hmm. So the fortunate thing is you're still able to trade with those FCAs. Right? And you can borrow against those FCAs. But I'm saying that for the greater majority of people in Zimbabwe, they're now going to be so. So I, I I want to push back strongly, and I want to make this case. So I'll, I'll, okay, l- l- let me let me simplify it and and, and express it this way, right? Mm-hmm. For as long as you can't get onto a plane, right, with a Zig denominated Visa or Mastercard, and actually swipe, right, um, nothing has changed, right? People who are accepting, okay. people who are happy to give you goods and services for US dollar green notes are not going to wake up tomorrow happy to give you those goods and services for Ziggs. So let me ask you a question, Rufaro. Mm. If yesterday, and you say nothing has changed, if yesterday you walked into a bank and you wanted to borrow Zim dollars and the interest was 130%, mm-hmm. and today or on Monday, mm-hmm. if you walk into the same bank, the interest rate is now 25%. Does it make a material difference to you? On paper, it does. But the reality is that even if I was able and willing to pay 130%, chances are I would visit all 17 licensed commercial banks and all of them would tell me they're not lending in Zim dollars. They just, uh, you know, as far as most of the banking sector was concerned, um, the Zim dollars was just there for fees and commissions. Sangana Nimfunzo. If... So, so if you paper, had a facility, if you had a so, facility, so on paper, if you had a facility, if I can borrow twenty percent instead of one thirty, of yeah. course I'm going to borrow twenty percent. And I said that's exactly what's going to happen. But what, but what I am saying, there's, is, there's every incentive for banks mm-hmm. right now. There's every incentive for banks mm-hmm. to start lending zigs 
and not US dollars. That's what we yeah, mean but, when but, we but, say. But but but, but oh, I, I agree with every, I agree with everything that you say. See what what you're saying is this is a way good money. What you're saying is valid and legitimate. All, all I'm pointing out and pushing back on is that. Um, okay, let's just go back to um, yesterday before this monetary policy statement, mm-hmm. right? If I asked you yesterday, is the utility of the Zim dollar going up or going down? What is the trend line to you? What, 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 how would you have answered that question? It's it's going down. Yeah. Okay. Great. We agree. Mm-hmm. So to, so from tomorrow we're going to the Zim dollar is not going to exist anymore. We're going to have yeah. this fantastic new currency we call Zig. Yeah. If I ask you tomorrow, going forward with this Zig currency, do you think its utility is going to be? Is, no, it's is a softer currency. Or it's going down. It's Where is its utility currency. going? It's going down. Exactly. So, yeah. so, so, so it but won't matter whether you can borrow it or not because no, it what, does because its utility going forward is coming off. If tomorrow you can borrow Zig and pay your tax, which ordinarily you were supposed to pay hundred percent. In US dollars. Mm-hmm. Now you can pay 50%. In fact, you can at least 50%. So you can pay. And, uh, what, and is the the trend line with the formal, what, what is the trend line with the formal sector? Is okay. it growing relative to the informal I think, sector? I think or, at this or, point, or? let's hear from the comments section if you guys agree with Rufaro or you agree with me. But what I do know, uh, well, let's hear the, uh, from the market and let's hear what you guys think. And then let's, we're going to replay this. In six months' time, and see exactly. Hundred right percent. Be be At least you're a, you're, you're you're a fair guy. You will always. I will concede when I'm you, wrong. You're when the data concede, tells me that I'm wrong. You're gonna concede, but let's hear what the market says uh, as far as that's concerned. But I want us to talk about, you know, uh, so let's talk about what it means in terms of interest rates, because they've now come out very clear. And they say that we have U.S. dollar interest rates and we have uh, Zig interest rates. And if I hear you properly, you're saying it's not it's it's going to be immaterial. Banks are just not going to land. Yeah. So so so, so apart from that argument as well, uh-huh. I think that, you know, which I disagree with you. The other disappointment that I have is this idea that you have the state through the central bank being prescriptive vis-a-vis interest rates. See, one of the reasons why the Zim dollar failed is because you had negative real interest rates. Okay. Mm-hmm. So so if I had uh, a million Zim dollars in my bank account three months ago, right, um, I could not buy an interest-bearing instrument that would preserve my purchasing power. So that's one of the reasons why the moment people receive meaningful amounts of Zim dollars, they are under pressure to get rid of them and buy currency or buy a non-monetary asset. It's because you have an interest rate regime that punishes you for holding the soft currency. You know, there's nothing wrong with a currency being soft intrinsically, right? If you think about the South African rand, for example, 10, 15 years ago, it was at 6, 7. Today, it's at 18, 19. But South Africans are still quite comfortable transacting in rands and saving in rands because they have real interest rates. So um, if you just leave your money in a bank account earning interest, you maintain your purchasing power. So part of the challenge with our printing in Zimbabwe is that we've had an interest rate policy that further eroded faith and confidence in the currency. And what you'd have thought would be a step of progress would be to move away from prescriptive, you know, um, interest rate policy to floating market driven interest rate policy. So, you know, we, 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 we've gone backwards. In mm-hmm. fact, we've, by actually reducing the interest rates from 130, right? I mean, what's changed really? If you actually apply your mind to this question, uh, between Zim dollar and Zig, to justify a 90% interest rate differential. like w- Because it's now competing with Nostro. They see it as no, direct no, no, competitors. No, 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 I hear you, but what I'm saying is substantively. Right? Well, absolutely nothing. <laughs> That's why you're creating this arbitrage. And the way we understand markets is the markets are going to punish the central bank for doing this because they've created an arbitrage and people will take advantage of that arbitrage. Simple, straightforward. Let's go on to the next one. Surrender requirements. 
which was it's now across the board it's 75% mm-hmm. uh, of you keep 75% export. of mm-hmm. your exports mm-hmm. and then 25% surrender and of that 25% they're saying 50% which is 12 and a half percent will go to the central bank and then 12 and a half will go to government is that enough for government's requirements and no, it means I, that the market the market has to find its own currency more or less i i, I don't know whether it's enough or not um it it sounds okay so off the bat it's arbitrary right i don't get the sense that you had a room full of actuaries mathematicians and statisticians you know working this problem and then they they figured right the correct percentage is 12.5 it's you know twelve point five sounds like somebody just sucked their thumb and said yeah that sounds like a good number and you know they make it be so right that's number one number two if you just when you think about it from a national accounts perspective right you you want to plan you know um, for your expenditure right it doesn't make sense to have these weird um, taxes. You know, fire retention where you say, you know, um, exporters are going to, uh, for every dollar that they bring into the country, we're going to, they have to immediately surrender 25%. And of this, you know, is it not better to just have a universal currency regime and then understand, and then just like for the person, if you're like the state CEO, if you're the CFO, if you're the treasurer, right, for you to understand, this is what I'm likely to collect over the next Okay. Three, six months. So, in, in effect, you're saying it's senseless. Let's go on to the next one. So, uh, the next one would be the auction backlog. So, we had a 37 week backlog with the auction. They're going to issue out TBs in Zig that are payable in two years' time. That so, is an IOU. Absolutely. So, you know, if you wanted to import something and you had gone through the auction and you were still on the backlog, what they've decided to do is to give you TBs. In Zig, in two years' time, that is appalling. That mature in two years' time. That is, you know, this is one of the more egregious things in this uh, economy monetary, monetary policy statement. So, so, mm. so, 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 so you, so you as an importer went to your bank in good faith with a uh, uh, foreign invoice, right, to apply for foreign currency. You committed your hard-earned local currency. Mm-hmm. You were allocated a hundred bucks, call it, yeah. And you, 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 your business actually dependent on you paying that uh, invoice and receiving some goods and services that facilitated the operation of your business, right? So, n- number one, the invoice never got paid, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Thirty-seven weeks later. You're not being compensated in any shape, size, or form for this delay. They're, they're going to give you an interest rate right? of 7, seven and, a half percent. And, and, and instead of coming back to you and saying, you know what, we're sorry, we allocated currency to you that we didn't have. The rate today is so much, here's your Zim dollars back. They're saying, we're going to give you this instrument that's only going to be liquid in two years. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Another bad one. Okay, and then we've got the surrender that had been ongoing. This is particularly with uh, the big miners who were owed money, right? They had surrendered uh, their US dollars, but they had not received the Zim dollars. Now they're going to get uh, Zig, and uh, they will get TBs as well. So instead of them getting yeah, uh, I mean, it's, 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 immediately, yeah. they'll get TBs. But that, again, is just increasing the money supply. So, so how, how do you plan your business? How do you, you know, if you know, if you're thinking about expanding your mine um, to increase production uh, over the next five, ten years, right? In the knowledge that you can wake up one day and um, you, some of the money that's legitimately owed to you, that's that 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 is due and payable, right? You can wake up and you can holding a piece of paper that's saying the earliest that you're going to get paid is two years from now or three or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, how do you engender the market's faith and confidence, the market's faith and confidence if you treat the people who are generating export receipts in such a fashion? You know, why would they 
invest in increasing production and increasing export receipts? Well, we'll find out, right? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it it, it's just appalling. It's and I, then our I, statutory uh, reserves, uh, they've kept the US dollar as well as the Zim dollar, but now it will apply with uh, ZIG, the statutory requirements, statutory reserves. Look, I don't know what it means for the banks. Um, I mean, geez, I... I you know, I, I think my, it, it creates a huge arbitrage. My heart community. bleeds for uh, my friends uh, in the banking industry. I mean, they have to wake up tomorrow morning and figure out how to change everybody's balance from Zim I think dollars. That's the list of the worries. I yeah, think, yeah, no, no. I'm just, I, think, I think there's the biggest, a litany of things that they the have. The biggest to, winners in this monetary policy are the banks. Do you think? Oh, yeah, because there's overnight there's a huge arbitrage opportunity that's just been given, where interest rates. You know, if you were holding uh, uh, interest rates in Zim dollars were at 130, this is so, still Zim so, dollars. So, so, so let me let, let me and let me ask you a question. It's now at. Do you uh, think? Do you think? Um, if you had to ask the question, uh, the banking sector's share of our economy today versus six months ago, a year ago, eighteen months ago, would you say it's growing or shrinking? Oh, it, it was shrinking. It definitely was shrinking. And do you but, think that... But <clears throat> banks have stopped making money from their assets. They've been making money from transactions and from arbitrage. Do you so think they stopped the, making money okay, from so, so, their balance sheet. So, so, so that stopped a long time uh, ago. So the banks, in my opinion, you know, please correct me if I'm wrong, their fortunes are tied to the fortunes of the formal sector. Right, uh, because it's well, not necessarily so. Because a lot of informal sectors will still need uh, offshore transfers, and those will be done by the banks. Um, I I think that uh, for the most part, the fortunes of the banks mm-hmm. are with people who are actually banking, and that's the formal sector. The informal sector, not so much. Um, Whoever wants to make a transfer, usually they use the banks. Um. But it's not just international transfer. It's usually cheaper. And right now, with this regime, that's another positive thing. So there are two positive things that I've picked up from this monetary statement. That's two more than me. (laughs) Well, I think the US dollar, the the fact that we can still trade in US dollars, albeit uh, as SCAs and not as Nostro, I think that's a good thing. I I, I don't think of that as I think think that's a good thing. I think the the ability of people to still keep their US dollars and still do whatever they want with their US dollars. So I'll push back. That's a good thing. I'll I'll push back and I'll I'll make the case that um, they really didn't have an option there. It's not like it's not like. Oh, believe you me, they could have done worse. It's it's we're dealing with Ngangas, yeah. These are spirit uh, mediums, eh? They could (laughs) they 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 could have done worse. I I don't think the option of raiding people's uh, national mattress bank accounts um, is is available um, to the government. Um, so so this multi currency thing, um, reaffirming that it's here until 2030. I don't think there's an alternative. So the second good thing that I think has happened is because we they have acknowledged that there are lots of free funds, and because there are lots of free funds, people are able to do their bank transfers in the banking system formally. Because if I can prove that these are my, you know, free cash flows. Yeah, but again, uh, nobody's, funds, nobody's keeping... I don't think there are people who are deliberately keeping free funds in banks. I think everybody who's got free funds in the bank has them well, there formal because... Well, businesses have to. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. You know, so they I, have to I'm, account. That's my point. My point is that nobody's I think that voluntarily you, keeping... I think that uh, you're going to find a lot of informal and, sector guys. And if you molest people's free funds, you just kill their businesses and the, those free funds disappear. Yeah, so, and so, I think that more so, and more, so, so, so again, I, I don't more and more think informal guys will start using the bank. Oh no, ways! That's not going to happen now. Oh yeah, yeah. To do your transfers, why no. would you? Why would you go to? Oh. Why would you go to someone who's going to charge you ten, fifteen percent to do an international transfer when a bank can do so, it similar? So, at, so, at so that tells percent. that tells you everything you need to know, Tinashe. Mm-hmm. Right? If somebody is willing to pay 10%. No, that was in the previous regime. And no, I'm no, saying no. in the new regime, you'll be able no, no, to do your transfers. No, no. Allow me to make my point. Uh-huh. My point is, if somebody's willing to pay 10% or 5% or whatever, you know, obscene amount, because it's a lot of money, right? Mm-hmm. 
to do a transfer outside the formal banking sector. What does it tell you about that person's mindset vis-a-vis the formal banking sector? Because it was illegal previously. That's the difference. It was illegal. You couldn't do that. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the questions because... Uh, oh, there are a bunch of questions. Yeah, there are a bunch of questions. Uh, could I have the questions up? We're not going to be able to do all the questions, but uh, we can... Well, we can do what we want. The producer's away. He's on the road somewhere. He can't supervise us. We uh, can be the, here for the, another 30 minutes if we like. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 you know, I've, I've barely... Well, what's happening there, Wizzy? You've kept me so engaged, I've barely put a dent in this bottle. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah, and, you know, it's just... Yeah, it's it's sad. You know, we, it's such a missed opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. You, We were at an inflection point where the market was desperately um, looking for good news, right? So the bar was really low, <laughs> Well, I, like I said, I think the reality was you guys were wishing for for miracles, and unfortunately, uh, this is not the land for miracles. Okay, so I'm going to use my phone so that we get some of the. Uh... But look, never a dull day, you know. You know. Okay, so here's a question from Asante Sana. And he says, my question is, in a dollarizing economy like ours, do we need eight months import cover or it's individual companies that have to keep the AFC as well? I I think that's a good question around import cover. Would you like to speak to that? Why why is it you need uh, import covers? Is it possible for... Look, he makes a a great point. I think, um, you know, we're dollarized and, uh, you know, it, it becomes a... You know, it stops being material whether we've got import cover or not. Uh, import cover only matters if you are using a local currency, and you need hard cu- you need foreign currency for imports. And to the extent mm. that we're dollarized, it means we're not using a local currency, and import cover becomes much less re- re- relevant in such an environment. Well, I think that that's not true, right? What, why? Well, because. And, and I've heard that case, and I think that uh, people are skirting around the truth. So our U.S. dollars, remember, even if you have a U.S. dollar, we're not a U.S. dollar one-to-one. We don't have a relationship with a U.S. dollar one-to-one. We do have nostrils that are not backed by U.S. dollars. And I'll say this, that uh, when you look at our deposits, it's $2.5 billion, and that $2.5 billion is only backed by $1 billion. So if we were to transfer money outside of this country would only be able to transfer a billion dollars, not $2.5 billion. So there's a significant amount of our U.S. dollar economy that is just actually RTGS. These are just credits. They're not backed by real U.S. dollars. I've never, re- I've never bought into that argument, uh, and we can go into a rabbit hole there. Uh, because Okay, so but it's an, we don't even need to go into an argument. Mm. If you go to any bank today mm-hmm. and you looked at their deposits and you said, Transfer all your deposits to America today. Mm-hmm. Will they be able to? No, but there's no bank in the world. If they had to pay out all the oh, deposits in America, today, they would. That's the difference. Is American RTGs? They can actually transfer the entire balance sheet. They could. The, okay. the difference is in Zimbabwe, you can't. You can only transfer a billion worth, mm-hmm. but you can't transfer. Yeah, but, but well, there's a there's a there's a 1.5 billion dollars that's is actually RTGS. It is, it's it's credit creation in the banking system. Yes, there's absolutely, absolutely nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and it's ring fenced and you know it's managed. It's managed so well, like a drought. So these are structural uh, structural problems that you have in an economy. We didn't anticipate a drought. Well, some may say we did, but if you're hit by a drought. The Reserve Bank should have reserves to then protect us because I think there'll be a currency run. And naturally, there'll be a currency run because you're not producing as much as you as you ordinarily should. And this is where the central bank comes in and supports the system, supports the fluidity 
of the the foreign exchange market. And we've seen this in Russia, you know, where you're attacked, your currency is attacked for whatever reason, and if you don't have import cover, then you have a problem. Then you have supply chain challenges, right? Mm-hmm. If I import something from China, it's going to take three months for it to get here. By the time it gets here, I don't want the exchange rate to have changed, mm-hmm. right? That I don't make money anymore. So mm-hmm. when I look at the central bank's yeah, but uh, if you're polarized, cover, you don't care. And I'm saying that you're not actually, you're not one to one dollarized. Mm. I think, okay, all right, let's move on. You're lost in that rabbit hole. You, 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 you're never one to one uh, dollarized, but we can, we can move on. Okay, Unyasha James says, uh, a comment on Zig Exchange, please. Do you think that uh, Zig will maintain as purported, you know, what they want Zig to do? Uh, do you think that the exchange rate is going to be maintained by the central bank or the market itself is going to price Zig? And if the market is going to price Zig, where do you think the rate will be? And this is really down your alley, right? Yeah, look, so um, before the monetary policy statement, um, if you had asked me where I see the local currency uh, US dollar exchange rate going, I would have, I would have guessed that it would, the devaluation would slow down significantly because the incoming governor is a conservative, uh, banker and would be strongly opposed to printing. Mm-hmm. Um, Unfortunately, today, with the benefit of the details of how Zig is going to work, um, I have a different view. Okay. Um, so, 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 in principle, the idea of Zig is that it's a structured currency. It's backed by gold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And. Um, if you're serious and you want to actually engender the faith and confidence of the market, um, you actually disclose to the market your um, the, the, the framework of the structure. So you say that you will... So, okay, it's implicit, right? Because uh, um, every unit of ZIG corresponds to a certain amount of gold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, technically... If one ounce of gold. So, yeah, so I think we've, yeah. we've explained so if, 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 if one ounce of gold, which is equivalent to 2294, hmm. uh, 2294 being the price of one ounce of gold. Mm-hmm. And then if you look at the exchange rate being uh, 29,000, that's how you get an exchange yeah. rate. So, so, so what you would do to engender the faith and confidence of the market, right? After um, disclosing such a structure, is you would, on an ongoing basis, be committed to disclosing how much gold you're holding to back up um, the amount of zig in issue and how much zig is an issue. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And um, in such a scenario, if you are faithful to that structure, it would be impossible to issue more zig without increasing your gold holding. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Um, and such a arrangement would ensure that uh in fact such a currency would actually perform better than the US dollar right um I because don't think it, so. because it'll be it, it'll be it's basically indexed to the gold price and and gold is actually uh, so, so so for it to work for it to be better than the US dollar mm. it means that you must settle in gold so if somebody has zigs up mm. there mm-hmm. and not today when there's a lot of propaganda but let's call it a year from now. Well, let me give it six months. Six months from today, mm-hmm. if somebody has Zig and walks into the bank vault and say, here's my Zig. I want gold. I want gold. You should be able to give them. You should be able to give them gold. Yeah. No, Only no, but, when but, you but, can but, do that. No, no, Only no, no. when you can do that. So, 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 will it then be look, stronger look, I, than the US dollar? I, 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 I we think, know that's not I, true. I think, I think um, we're differing on... Protocols, right? So, so, so that would be the most extreme version of that, right? But what I'm saying is, if somebody no, that's actually not the most extreme. Version. Okay, well, it's, it's it's one of the more extreme versions. But if somebody like Price Waterhouse Coopers, um, 
went weekly to the reserves bank's vault, or better yet, that gold was actually shipped to um, a friendly, you know, uh, country's um, vault, like South Africa or China or whatever, right? And you had a credible independent third party like Price Waterhouse or whoever, you know, which, which, whichever name comes most naturally to you, right? Every week you say, listen, there's so much. The market wouldn't trust that. No, no, I, I, I think the market will, will still not trust that. And that's why. Why wouldn't the market trust that? Because it's not about auditing. It's about what actually happens in the marketplace. Yeah, so what I'm saying is, so, 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 so how so, we know, how we know, so, let me, let me, yeah. let me tell you how it should ordinarily work. Mm-hmm. And this is exactly why we needed a currency board. Because with a currency board, mm-hmm. it's, the proof is in the pudding. It's someone walks into a bank and say, I have Zim dollars. I want US dollar. And then you have to give them. You have to give them. It's in the marketplace. It's not in the auditing. It's not in having all these mm. different structures and complexity. Yeah, but it's wait, actually in the marketplace. So, so, so I, I think so. When you look at, wait, let me let me finish this line of thinking. Let's look at Russia. Nobody trusts Russia, right? Mm-hmm. And whatever <laughs> Putin says, but you have to give him credit that his he, checks clear. His checks, his clear. checks are clearing, mm. and that's the proof. His checks are clearing. Mm-hmm. So similarly with Zig, at some point, it must clear. Because if it doesn't clear, then you then have a there's big a problem. problem. Mm. There's a big problem. Okay, no, fair enough, fair enough. So, so um, no I, I need to, I need, I need to uh, move on sure. uh, quickly. Because this one is a very interesting one. Uh, and it's around, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We now have the strongest currency in Southern Africa. Ziggy, 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 ziggy. At 1 is to 13, it's stronger than the Rand which is uh, 1 is to 19. Uh, and Mufanda Edza says, it looks like we're just targeting one-to-one to, one to the rand. Why can't we just run their eyes with the zig at par with the rand? Yeah, look. Um, firstly, it, it, it's, let's have the conversation about the strongest currency in six months or three months. <laughs> um, you know, um I think the option has always been there for us, you know. Um, so if you think about it in a Southern African context, um, although Botswana has a currency called the Pula, it's a member of the uh, Rand Monetary um, Union. Union. Yeah. Namibia is also a member of the, uh, you know, yeah. and they do just fine, right? And I think that if we had a good faith conversation with our uh, neighbors south of the Limpopo about joining the Rand uh, Monetary Union, they would... Embrace us with open arms. Uh, no, we've tried and no, no, I don't think no. we've tried. We have. I, I don't because Tuli is on record as having tried because we are not willing to sign the T's and C's. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right, so that's that's because willing. The there's, 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 <laughs> Fair you, enough. You, you can't. You can't. You can't. You Fair can't enough. try to. Procure, okay. Yeah. Next one, uh, James Chinyahara says, "A kindly shed light on what will happen if the price of gold weakens." If the currency issue is based on a higher value of gold, which is true because ZIG is based on the highest value of gold that we've seen in 20 years. In fact, no, in history, it's in an history, all yeah. time high. Yeah. Um, so that's an, you know? the other criticism I have for. So, for, for so we're, we're pitching our, at an extremely high. Gold so what's going to happen if it comes off, let's say 20, 30 percent? Will it have a multiplier on uh, our local currency? Of course it will. It, of course it will have an impact on the value of our local currency. And and that's another challenge that I have. And one of my criticisms of marrying our local currency to gold, right? Um, mm. Gold, we don't control the price of gold. Yeah? Um, gold should actually just be a reserve and not... So why, why should we anchor our currency in gold? There is not a single state in the world that's doing this. Why do we well, think it's clear? I was, it's, it's hyperinflation. I, I think that done properly, it works. But uh, done in the way that uh, these guys have done, uh, it doesn't work. I, I think, uh, you know, we've got a lot more questions, but I think we'll address them during the week. Maybe we can have a, a spaces on a space X. On X. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe sometime mm-hmm. next week when we've had time to ruminate and to think about uh, a lot of the questions and a lot of uh, what would transpire. Because what, what I'm actually very interested in is how markets are going to react uh, in the next uh, two days or so. 
it's going to be fascinating what happens. In, maybe let's give it seven days and see what actually happens. But, uh, you know, that's it from us. You can see that there are lots of things that we agree on and there are lots that we actually disagree on. And unlike uh, Rufara, I actually think that there are two things that are good <laughs> in this monetary <laughs> statement. Number one, that we can actually still use our FCAs. They're not going to be Nostro. They're going to be FCAs, real U.S. dollars. You can still trade Semantics. real uh, U.S. dollars. And the second thing is we can make our transfers. If you've got the money... It's free funds. You can make your transfers uh, on, and we don't have the auction anymore. That's a somewhat positive. But uh, generally, I think that we've missed the mark. Like we both agree, this is a, a stage four cancer patient. The good news is we're a country. The patient is not going to die. <laughs> <laughs> the bad news, it's pain and suffering for an eternity. Feels like hell, but anyway, well, let's hear your thoughts. Eternity, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe one day it will change. Maybe but let's hear your thoughts. Yeah, maybe the feedback uh, is going to um, reach um, that building in Samora Mashal and influence some of the decision. Oh, I can I can bet you that in the next two weeks they're going to change a number of things. They've created a huge arbitrage opportunity. Interest rates are an arbitrage opportunity, and if you're pricing your interest rates next to the US dollar or our local Nostro, uh, you're, you're going to lose that battle. But anyway, let's see what's going to happen. But I can bet my zig that uh, in the next one month, we're going to see a lot of policy changes arising from this, which really is a bad way to start for John Michel Avanu. But uh, we hope he listens. We hope that uh, he'll be able to change a number of things. Uh, in the next month, and hopefully the market can respond. Do you to want that. to extend him an invitation? Oh yeah, definitely. It's always open. We'd love to have him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, uh, have yourself a wonderful Friday evening and weekend, and uh, let's continue talking. Please let me know what the arbitrage opportunities are. I'd be quite interested. Otherwise, uh, have yourself a wonderful week ahead. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>